What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters. Sean, Zankoshu, Kregan, Kaiju Paladin Gabriel, Raven Fighter 91, Jasic, Bobby Dolphins 1972, Jimmy McFickus, Saracian, Sean McLaughlin, Samuel Ward, Sir Flame, Caitlin Harrington Robinson, Kaiser Sani, Son of Nemesis, Justin Jensen, Stephen Sharp, Ayla Ann, OXL, The Elemental Viper, Brony Time, Corey Costello, Wolf Jaeger, Carl Lee, Lewis H., Milo Man, and Tyler Johnson. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producer, The Anime Hybrid. Thank you all very much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Okay, oh my god! <laughs> You son of a bitch! Get off me! Oh! oh my god! I didn't see the time! I didn't see the fucking time! God dang it, I didn't see the time! And again, we're back to this. More JonTron. So here's the thing about, about this video here. This one has been requested so much. Like, oh dear God, the amount of times this has been suggested. Holy shit. I mean, I, 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 it would take, we could, I could, we could all hold up our hands and our feet in here, like count the fingers and toes, and we would still not be anywhere near the amount of times this has been recommended. Like, people on the Discord, especially on the Discord, holy crap. This is the first time I've heard of it. Yeah. So, Dark Dungeons, I don't know what this is about entirely, but this is back when John Tron was making stuff about games. I know of Darkest Dungeon. I do too. Yeah, I, I'm not sure Which if this That's is supposedly a good game, so... If I had to guess, a lot of John Tron's old videos are not about good games, so... Some are. Some are about fairly decent games. I mean... I think Darkest <clears throat> Dungeon is its own thing. Well, people really want to hear people, like, shit on old video games... For instance, I remember when AVGN made a video, like, he, this is back when he was traditionally making videos about, like, terrible video games, and then all of a sudden he's like, I'm gonna do Super Mario Brothers 3, which is, like, one of the greatest games of all time. And then all of a sudden he was just like, you know, this game's too perfect. I'm convinced that this game is actually, you know, not made by human hands. It's actually made by something more wicked. And then all of a sudden the devil pops out. Literally the devil pops out of it, and he's just like, I'll fight back against this. And he, like, gets dressed up and, like, all of his, like... He puts on, like, Ninten like the Nintendo cape and everything, which is, like, the, you know, the run mat from that one, uh, that one like, uh, Olympics game where you could, like, run on the mat to, like, the faster you ran, the faster your character ran. And then he put on, like, the the little visor that he had the, the blaster and everything, and he was fighting back against it. And then all of a sudden, here comes Super, Me uh, Super Mecha Death Christ, uh, which... Every time Christ Super Mega Death Christ was on screen, it would literally just like shoot laser beams out of its eyes and yell, "Fuckers! Fuckers!" It's like Jesus Christ. Oh, that way, that was a JonTron video. No, no, I was uh, AVGN. Oh, I just looked up the <clears throat> description for Darkest Dungeon. And I don't think I would enjoy it. Darkest Dungeon is a challenging gothic roguelike turn-based RPG. You hate roguelikes. Roguelike turn-based RPG. Oh, God. About the psychological stresses of adventuring. Recruit, train, lead a team of flawed heroes against unimaginable horror, stress, famine, disease, and the ever-encroaching dark. And I was like, I think I'd, my own stress would be part of that experience. <laughs> well, thankfully, that's not this game. This is Dark Dungeons, so... Yeah, we'll see. I guess we will have to see. Well, we got the John Tron episode queued up here. Let's give it a watch. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Jesus? Micah? What are you doing here? I have returned from my mission 
Now every young boy in Nebraska knows that if he gets a little too curious down there, severe blindness and furry palms will ensue. Magnificent Barbarilius. What you lack in a normal name, you make up in passion for our cause. The cycle of fear-mongering is almost complete. There is but one more young boy we must capture to turn the tides of war. Master, you don't mean... It's too risky, we don't have to... Silence! Summon his head at one! It is a risk well worth taking. The time has come! <laughs> what? Eh? <laughs> Back with your feet! Back to the realm of Molestria! Molestria? Wow. That was really great in this movie, I don't remember being in. Help! <laughs> <laughs> I am losing the fight! I'm going down! You know what I feel like talking about today? Fear-mongering! It never goes out of style. From Reefer oh God, Madness Reefer back Madness. in 1936, oh warning us of the dangers of the demon drug marijuana, to the Red Scare, keeping us away from those evil commies who could be your next-door neighbor, to even the news media today with its endless upon endless mountains of scare campaigns. Every day it seems something new is encroaching on you, waiting to strike when you least expect it. Oh! Ah! Who are you? I'm rich. Okay, could you get out of my house? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? Don't be a rich... What? Anyways, that brings me to today's subject. Odd. The Chick Tract. For those of you that don't know, a Chick <clears throat> Tract is a short evangelical literary work created uh, and yes. published by American publisher Jack T. Chick. In short, they're a bunch of brief comics that warn about the folly of man and how to best avoid God's wrath. Now, it sounds silly enough, but this guy is prolific, selling over 750 million tracks via his publication. Gosh be damned, man, that's a lot of Jesus! Jack be nimble, Jack T. Chick, Jack be right in the pile of shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay. One track, though, mm. was meant to stand out among the rest. The one. The only. The 1984 publication of Dark Dungeons. This one dealt with the dangers of playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it now. This is what this is about. My grandma. My, my grandma mom. Read this. My mom thought that Dungeons and Dragons was evil in witchcraft. Until I finally got to explain to her. Even when I finally started playing Pathfinder, you know what she said about it? She's like, that sounds kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, it is, Mom. Pretty and similar. Dungeons and Dragons is not evil witchcraft. It's a bunch of nerds sitting at a table rolling dice. Like, Every she's Friday like, is it, night, is it gambling? Man. No, it's not gambling. You're not betting money or anything on it. You're just telling a story and saying what happens. You gamble with your feelings. Pretty much. You watch Pretty your much. friends die. Yes. And also, you have to roll the dice. You gamble with the life of your bard as you try to seduce a dragon. Like, basically, that's about it. Like, wow. Okay. What? You know what's happened in shit tons of campaigns before. I know, and I don't <laughs> like it. That's the meme. Our bard has never seduced anything. If anything, I'd probably be a barbarian. Crush people with my mighty acts of, uh, mighty acts of awesomeness. You can be a barbarian. Yeah. I'd be a barbarian. I heard about that class, and I'm just like, that sounds kind of like me. I play music, but yet I'm a vicious killing machine in my dreams. <laughs> Sorry, but I remember my grandmother telling me about, you know, the evils of Dungeons and & Dragons, and that she... You know, I remember reading these in, like, doctor's offices and stuff like that. Some of them are fairly, like, touching. Some of them are, like, very, like, heart-wrenching. But at the same time, there's some that you just go... Okay, it was at this time, I think, that Mr. Chick was kind of out of his element and was kind of being, you know, stupid with his writings here because this stuff is absolutely ridiculous. Like, there, this one right here... fear-mongering to make money, like... Exactly, in which... So many others. Yeah, I, I, and I don't get that. I Look, 
like I'm pretty sure one of the pages I follow on social media is the D and D pastor. <laughs> Where yeah. he's a pastor that <clears throat> plays D and D with his kids. My my pastor my my pastor was a huge fan of like of role playing games and Dungeons and Dragons as well. Well But I, I never played with him, but he said that he played it a lot. So he one loved of, it. One of the best known fantasy authors of all time, who happens to be a Christian, whose magnum opus was Christian allegory that informed Dungeons and Dragons was J.R.R. R. R. Tolkien. Tolkien. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm, and also C.S. Lewis yeah. as well, who is a hardcore See, Christian. As a kid, like I was used to the freaking over encroaching like uh, adults at the church thinking that everything that I was wanting to get into was satanic. Right, because it's like, and obviously if a young person likes it, it's trash. It's yeah, like, I'd already had a problem with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, like basically okay. anything I wanted to do at church, like uh, among my friends and stuff. Like we had to explain why it wasn't satanic to yeah. the adults. <laughs> Yeah, and which like, the adults weren't. Which we actually succeeded several times in teaching adults that things weren't satanic that they thought were. But um, one of the things that I was worried about, I was like, yeah, I went to a church camp and I just picked up The Hobbit and I wanted to read it. And I was like, am I allowed to read this here? I mean, it's got yeah. like, you know, wizards and yeah. and they're like, oh, Tolkien's Christian. That's yeah. fine. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yep. okay. <laughs> yep. Actually like, makes me wonder about Gary Tolkien's Gygax. Tolkien's Christian, and he has wizards in his stuff, and yet people are like, oh, Dungeons and Dragons has wizards! Yeah. Satan! Satan! A, a lot of the influence for Dungeons and Dragons came from things like, well, I mean, Lord of the Rings, obviously, but then, I mean, like, you know, Robert yeah. E. Howard with the Barbarian stuff with Conan, and then uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, things like that. But yeah, it's like, so that, that cracks me up. That stuff is hilarious, I think. That, yeah. Uh, it is not stated whether or not he was Christian or not, but Gary Gygax... Uh, was actually a uh, an avid outdoorsman and loved to shoot his his uh, bows and arrows and guns and everything and was an avid gun collector and uh, was and loved the United States and was wholeheartedly American. So, I mean, honestly, that's I I don't get why Dungeons and Dragons would be evil. Uh, other than the fact well, that you don't understand it and you just want to have a reason well, to complain about shit. I mean, it's the same thing we see as well, like, it's entirely that. the media like, latches onto anything for a fear-mongering story. I mean, yeah, that's the world well, we live in. It's always as, been that way. You well, know, basically, horror has a proclaimed and like, I mean, not just horror things, but like society in general, like people have a fear of things they don't understand. Yes. Dungeons and Dragons is not the easiest thing to understand, no, especially from an outside perspective of someone who's not a nerd and has never thought about doing something like that. So they're going to fear it. Yeah, well, and and when you're a God fearing Christian that's basically afraid of freaking everything that you aren't taught in church, then obviously like Dungeons and Dragons is going to be seem real scary to you with its all complex math and numbers and yeah wizards and goblins and shit. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, let's get back to this. And the satanic inclinations of those who worship the twenty-sided die. I mean, come on, let's talk some sense, all right? We all know how dangerous Dungeons and Dragons is. <laughs> Among the tabletop gaming community, Dark Dungeons became something of a cult classic, a cultural. <laughs> Only danger is keeping your virginity that Christian so wants you to do. Hobby. So, what's this I have here? You may ask. Well, I'll tell you. Apparently, a group of filmmakers acquired the actual legitimate rights to make a film adaptation of the Dark Dungeons track. And what? Yes, Jack T. Chick put his stamp of approval on it himself. What? That's all I gotta say. It's gonna be a good one. And let's go. Oh, no. This is gonna oh, be terrible. Oh, and there it goes. 200 damage to my DVD player for reading the data on this goddamn disc. <laughs> so... Our film begins as a secret council discusses how it has been plotting to bring more and more innocent youths to the dark side. Evil will reign, and we will bring it forth in the flesh. Astrology and tarot card sales are pulling more and more young people into the Dark One's domain. World politics are steadily progressing toward our one world government. And I left an episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy on three separate people's TVs. <laughs> I am excited we watch that in school regularly. That this year, more people have decided to be homosexuals than ever before in history. Ah, yes! The dark magic has been especially strong this year. Gays! Okay, popping up Wait. left and right. 
So is that part of the movie? I think so. Or is that stuff he filmed? I think this is part of the movie. Everything but himself is actually part of this movie. Okay, because... That's what I was thinking when it came on. I was like, John Tron could have made this himself, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) because, like, just him there edited in looked, like, on par with the rest of the film. So I was confused if this wasn't his entire skit or... (laughs) Well, they're filming this without prime lenses, so it doesn't have that cinematic look. So, yeah, that's why it, it looks subpar in terms of quality. Sorry, John Tron. We can corrupt just a few more souls at this college, then the stars will be right. And, and when, when the stars, stars are right... Oh, shit. He, uh, uh, he will awaken and, and revel, revel across, across the world. Blood dies, blood dies. The end he will give you AIDS. Then you'll go to hell with all the Catholics and Jews and play magic the gathering with... So here we meet friends and protagonists Debbie and Marcy. No, Satan, stay away from my wallet. Who find themselves on a new Can't afford magic together. together. Ready to explore college life and spread the good word of the Lord. They head to their college orientation and watch a film on a projector that's as outdated as the beliefs presented in this film. Hey, who are those people? Oh my Those God! RPGers. At this juncture, we're introduced to the so-called RPGers. In this world, they're the cool kids on campus. <laughs> that, In what world? That is exactly what. In what world? That's exactly how I roll in with my D and D crew. Exactly. That's, that's spot on. We that, have. I love that they made the two Christian girls look like the girls that would be playing D and D in real life. Like they look yes! nerdy as all fuck. That's that's one more girl than our group has, but other than that, it looks exactly. The <laughs> same. And in no world w- does like is that the kind of girls that like hang out with the fucking jocks no. either. Like whoever made this has no fucking social awareness whatsoever. I disagree. My group looks exactly like that. Fair enough. I mean, I don't know. The RPG years. Yeah. I've thought about buying a leather jacket. I play D&D. I'm not going to lie. Jacket, but... I'll, let, I'll let you wear my leather jacket. It fits you better than it fits me. I mean, normally I'm the one in the short shorts with the knee-high socks, personally. <laughs> but the rest, yeah. That's a bit of image for yeah. you there, Internet. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, apparently they think all the only goth kids play fans. D&D, and I'm pretty sure that the goth kids don't usually seem to get into d and I've seen like one or two play, but not, not a whole group of them. Uh, D&D is really accessible to everybody as long as they're willing to learn the boundaries and rules and everything. Half the people I play with don't know <laughs> the rules. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is this seems entirely accurate to me. I don't know. Oh my I don't gosh. know where I don't know where the spoof starts. Wait. Oh, I thought that that <laughs> one blonde haired girl looked familiar. At this RPG we're introduced to the so-called RPGers. In this world, they're the cool kids on campus. Mm-hmm. Very factual there. Marcy and Debbie are instantly allured. We've been trying to get them thrown off campus for years, but they're just too popular. What's an RPG? You don't need to know. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I kind of do, though. But, ignoring Mike's warning against engagement with this radical group, I've seen a lot of students try to dabble with RPGs. Not one has ever stopped. The girls set off to the fraternity of role players in an attempt to convert some of the players to a different way of thinking. Or so they say. Come on. We've got I like how this socialize. Christian film keeps almost upskirting right. the one girl, like, with we camera don't... angles. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's like, party, I thought she was supposed to be modest, Saturday, modest and stuff. Yeah. How much fun it's disturbing. Have that? Not much, I guess. Yeah, not much you could do there. What could go wrong? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're right. A lot of this is like on par with what John's putting out there. He's perfectly integrated himself into it. Yes, he has. <laughs> Having second thoughts. Yeah, maybe we should just go. And who might you be? We're just leaving. Oh, I just leaving? I'm <laughs> right. After Hansi McGooner's study over here, strong arms Marcy away, they are now whisked into the dark underbelly of the role-playing world. Are you all having a good time? I mean, yeah, it's, it's been all right. Well, I know you all like to drink. I 
hydration is important. Are you ready for the main event? Yeah! Are you ready to RPG? Yeah. Oh, motherfucker, I was born ready! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to RPG! 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 Oh, if you say so. <laughs> wow, that's a very coincidentally coordinated action. Maybe we should go. That senior warned us about playing RPGs. Uh, what does he know? Mike knows nothing. After all, what did he say would happen? Uh, excuse me, who are you? Mike said that once we start, we won't want to stop. That's true of eating, drinking, and... Pringles. Especially the pizza-flavored ones. Oh, look. Here I go again. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are not like disrespecting that. Mistress Frost by refusing- Calm down, Nitro. Yes, seriously, what the fuck? Calm down, dude. Go back to playing Flip Cup, huh? If they want to be a couple of chickens who go their entire lives without experiencing the unrivaled thrill of an RPG, that's their business. We're not chicken. Then prove it by playing. Also, I'm gonna need a DNA sample from each of you and a picture of what you think Wait. a chicken is. This is Make the, sure we're talking about the same That's thing. like a little tag gun for so, clothing. So, the girls fall victim, and the mysterious lady, who is definitely college-aged and the correct demographic for role-playing, introduces them to their new alter egos. You are Blackleaf, the thief who is to the night as the day is to the shadow. The shadow? The shadow. The shadow. Yeah. Shadow. 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 Heard you. Heard, shadow. heard you first time. Shadow. Got it. Shadow. Got him. You shall be Elstar, cleric. And possessor of the real power. What is the real power? Yeah, uh, how come, excuse me, why does she get the real power? What is the, what is the real power exactly? It so sounds better whoever I got. Shadow? Yeah, Shadow's not as good as real power. Now, let the games begin. And may your roles be ever natural. <laughs> huh? What? Those are okay. all D6s. Playing games with an evil witch woman who's definitely college age. Wait, why did that guy just blow smoke out of his face? That's weird. When you die in the game, you die in real life, except you don't. You go back to your dorm and play some GTA 5. Uh-huh. All right, whatever. I use magic missile to attack the darkness. Baldrick Windy Drawers, defeated and broken at your feet. How shall you slay your defeated foe? Oh, God. We don't have to kill him, do we? No, you could show mercy to your enemy, and all it would cost would be your gold and your weapons. From my cold, dead scum! Doesn't make any sense! No. Witch. I will slay the helpless foe. I have no mercy. I am chaotic neutral. Excellent RPG, Debbie. <laughs> I stab him with a poison dagger! You want it? Huh? You want it? Then take it. Take it! Take it! What? Damn! You know, <laughs> it, was, it was all cool and good, but uh, after that, I just, I, I, I don't think this could be the same anymore. That was the best RPG I've seen in 15 years. And I'm only 15! Or at least that's what the crack in my brain made my brain say to me. <laughs> <laughs> what is this shit? So the girls go home and sit on their beds, dreaming about the fun they had earlier in the night. All the while, the Dark Council schemes about their upcoming sacrifice. Can I tell you something? When I started casting spells in the game, I felt something. I don't know what it was. I don't even know how to describe it, but... Keep on trying. You'll get there. I'm strong. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? So, after nights and nights of RPG playing, Debbie's teacher takes note of her failing grades. You know, when you first started here, I thought you were going to be one of the brightest students here, but ever since you involved yourself in those wicked RPGs, your grades have been going down steadily, month How by month. How does the teacher even RPGs know that? RPGs aren't that bad. Spells, poison, battles, maiming, killing? Yeah, but it's all imagination. Is it? Yes! yes Debbie! Well, I suggest you read a totally real book that has absolutely no poisoning, maiming, or killing in it called the Holy Bible. Think about that, John. Oh, no. Well, that book, that book done, goddammit. <laughs> the RPGs, Debbie. It's your only hope. But predictably, not heeding her professor's advice, she decides to go back in for one final game and discovers she is ready to receive the true power. Your cleric has been raised to the eighth level. I think it's time you really learn to cast spells. Do you think you can maybe back up a bit? I brought Elstar to become a priestess and witch. Yes. Both of those things for some reason. 
him, buddy. Wait, hold on. That, that's what RPG does? That's what it gives you? Well, that's fucking awesome. I gotta get on that right now. So Debbie uses Those look a lot like the Tolkien Elvish runes. On her paper. <laughs> oh, and now she dresses like Morticia Adams, by the way. Wait. Real powers. I gotta read the vampire, Maven of the Even. Okay, sounds like a pretty cool campaign. I've I I, I actually know a you a, a former YouTuber who went by that name, Maven of the Eventide. She used to work with Lindsay Ellis, uh, the Nostalgia Chick. Oh, okay. I don't. Yeah, I, I, Nostalgia Chick. She's the Doug Walker's like like alter like female counterpart <clears throat> oh and now she dresses like Morticia Adams by the way and some weird shit like this goes down I think your hands are perfect for spell casting so delicate and small ew oh. hello Mr. Frost enough chit chatting we have important matters to discuss the evil undead Lich Zykon is attempting to reach the gate um Mr. Frost yeah I'm gonna let you finish up by our missions in the dark it's all good about the evil Lich but first check out my high score Flappy Bird <laughs> I still love the game, but it doesn't have the same kick it used to have, you know? I could go for some stronger stuff. Then it is time for L-A-R-P. What's that? Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> What's really? that? Live action role playing! <laughs> accurate. Very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning bolt! Thunderbolt. Uh, 3,000 more critical! Thunder, Dark out critical! Thunder! Thunder! Thy arts are slain. Though you have gained many skills through your RPG, LARPing will tax them as they've never been taxed before. Who are you? Uh, I'm Marcy. No! I mean literally, who are you? I have very short-term memory. I'm Blackleaf, the thief of the shadows. Sick voice. So now the dungeon mistress, Mrs. Frost, is prepping the girls for live-action role-playing. She explains that they can never break character, or else suffer the wrath of forever losing their privilege to play RPGs with her! No, that would be a truly unbearable fate! You come across this in your quest. It appears to be some kind of Arabic. Yes, one of the many varieties. Wait, Marcy, didn't you learn Arabic? You needed it to convert the Muslims, who didn't realize they were actually worshipping the moon god. I ain't even... I ain't even going near that. <laughs> I'm not sure I should, Marcy. We need to get you to level eight. Read it. Anya Sotira, Alentithor, Adewalbimarul, Al Hoker, Pata, Miach Kajufna. Salagadoo, La Mechica Boo, La Bibbidi Babbidi Boo. Put them together and what have you got? Bibbidi Babbidi Bibbidi Babbidi Boo. Bibbidi Boo. I think it means something is not dead, which has the capacity to exist eternally. Eh, just admit it. You put that shit in Google Translate and we weren't looking, didn't you? And if the abnormal duration comes, then death might cease. What on earth does that mean? That is not dead. <laughs> For God's sake, would y'all quit that shit? I, I, and I, it's Cthulhu. Of course it's Cthulhu. Wait, Who else would that's it be? in the we movie? Got Cthulhu. Mistress Frost, the Dark One requires a sacrifice if he is to fully rise. Why is she using a walkie-talkie? Aren't they demons? Can't they speak to each other through brain? And since when has she got an earpiece on? I mean, these are a bunch of well-coordinated techie demigods, I'll tell you that much. I can easily take care of that. No. The Dark One needs one of them to take her own life. Actually, McDougal back here says we all get a free Egg McMuffin if you do the slaying yourself, so... You know what to do. <laughs> you know what, actually, it's probably not the greatest idea to piss off Cthulhu Lord of Darkness for the McDonald's breakfast menu. So, oh uh, uh, yeah, abort mission, actually. <laughs> hey, you know what, fuck it. McMuffin, go <laughs> around, let's get this party started! Yeah. You travel deep, deep down your path, where you encounter the zombie. I shall decapitate the fiend. You encounter... Kissow! Kissow! Who now? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. What, what's, what's my one again? I'm a diamond. How are you doing that with your voice? No. That is not an adequate answer to my question! I am Legion. <gasps> Stop that right now! If you act, you will be breaking character. Oh god, anything but that! So, Debbie comes to the conclusion that she must betray Marcy as not to break her character, and Marcy is declared dead from the game. 
Marcy, get out of here. You're dead. You don't exist anymore. But... So just walk away. My god. This is gonna be really <clears throat> awkward when they get home into their dorm tonight. No! Oh yeah, that's awkward. Marcy, you didn't have to do that. Yeah! No, like, I mean, you really did. This whole thing wasn't really a big deal, honestly. It's my fault Blackleaf died. I can't face life alone. So yes, Marcy fucking actually hangs herself over Exile from the RPG. And well, uh, fun fact about this frame, it's actually ripped straight from the original Chick Track, right down to the formatting and the font of the text. Now that's how you do an adaptation. Take note of that, Dragon Ball Evolution, you <laughs> fucking anomalous wretch in need of euthanization. I can't get Marcy out of my mind. How could she do something like this? It would have happened sooner or later. All she was good for was reading the Necronomicon and summoning Cthulhu. Eh, come on! That's it! That's all she was good for! They even he said it. Pretty she bored. caused her they friend even to commit suicide, it. as one does. Debbie gets even more fired up and plays right into the hands of Mrs. Frost. So logically, she goes into the nearby steam tunnels and starts casting spells at bat sounds. And also, she encounters a poo-poo monster that tries to eat her. Oh, I feel that. Debbie, why don't you just give up? Oh gosh, the ghost of Marcy is back. It's a miracle. It's your fault. I'm dead. Okay, even if that were true, little subtlety take you a long way. Oh, Marcy, I'm so sorry. Why don't you come join me? I will, Marcy. I will. In hell. It's um. one big party, and all your friends will be there. Oh, yeah? Well, that sounds an awful lot like what a disguised Satan would say. God help me! God help me! <laughs> hey, Debbie, what's wrong? Well, it's a bit of a long story. Uh, has your friend ever hung herself because you killed her character in Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> Evil without end is about to descend upon the works of man. And none of my RPG tomes have the answer how to stop it. Been there, girlfriend. Debbie, I told you. <laughs> Jesus is the only answer. Using RPGs to fight evil will never work. <laughs> because RPGs <laughs> are evil, Debbie. Amen. <laughs> so now with the help of Deus Ex Machina Mike, Debbie is <sighs> taken to the one man who can help her rid herself of the evils that now infest her soul. Jesus! Because of the tabletop dungeon... Crawler! The local pastry. I mean, the local pastor. Hey, could have fooled me. Only difference I see between two is one of them's real yummy. You know what I'm saying? Jesus sets us free from the bondage of witchcraft. Gather up all of your occult paraphernalia. The rock music. Occult books, including those by C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. Holy shit, this is just... Wow. Awful! I'll fight somebody over C.S. Lewis. Oh, yeah, I don't even play that. No, I don't either. Even C.S. Lewis is Satan now. Man. Wow. Gather up your occult shit. Gather, <laughs> gather up your rock music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it all on my iPhone, so I, do I throw up my iPhone? Cause I, I don't I know. Can't do that. I mean, you know, long hair is usually bad on guys. That pastor had pretty long hair. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Because that back in the day, that was always the thing. It's like, yeah. I, mm. Although I will be given a pass on the works of George R. R. Martin, because fuck me, Jon Snow is just a total goddamn heartthrob, and you know it. If you doubt the occult nature of these books, just take a look here. No kid should be going through a wardrobe into a winter wonderland having dialogue with a talking lion. That should be motherfucking witchcraft. But don't just throw them away. Burn them. Yes, burn them! The smaller the chance of an unbiased, peer-reviewed study, the better! I need help! My life's a mess. Help me! So Debbie gives in to the power of the Lord and asks to be absolved of her inner demon. Debbie! Think of what you would be giving up. Who? What you do you really want to lose all your weapons and gold? Debbie, for God's <laughs> sake, the man is speaking reason! Listen! You are nothing without the game! Don't. All right, cool it. Jesus, I repent. I want you to be in charge of everything, not that lousy RPG manual. Hey, you watch what you're saying about a manual. He's pretty cool. 
Now back at base, the demon computing systems are going off the charts because Debbie renounced her role-playing character. <laughs> the stars are no longer right. Why are the stars no longer right? The systems are malfunctioning! John is clocking in at a whopping 319! <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, nice to know you, nice to see you. What the fuck is this? And so with that, balance is restored. And Whoa! Holy crap! Or not. Was that necessary? Okay. And the film ends, how else, but with a mass book burning. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. That is word for word how the comic strip goes, and it even makes mention to the specific works of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. <laughs> Tolkien, which makes it so much better that it's actually in the movie. Now, you can argue that this movie didn't take this or these topics seriously, but the writer of the original work did, and this is a true adaptation. So that makes this movie legit, and that's all that matters to me. So, everyone, thank you for going on this wonderful journey with me. Good night. So... God bless. So, America, so my D and D group, we've been society. we've been talking yeah. about having a bad movie night. I think I found yes, the movie. You found, I'm it. Gonna <laughs> you found it. This is the winner. <laughs> this would be the best for you for your all's D and D because I guarantee all of you would be dying laughing. Uh, yes. Oh God, have mercy. Oh, this hurts so bad. Ugh. Maybe? I don't know. You guys want to see a cool sword trick? No. <laughs> oh, crap. So, yes, a big thanks to Audible.com for sponsoring this episode of John Tron. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. You know what it is, right? It's oh, just a bunch yeah. of Christian parents, that guy that wrote that stuff included, that was just really concerned about their kids turning into fucking nerds, so they decided to link it with Satan to try to keep them away from it. Right. Because <laughs> they probably, it was like... like he'll never make football team and go to yeah, the NFL that, if they get into that fucking D&D &D shit, so we gotta probably, tell them it's Satan. It's, it's like my buddy's dad that wanted like to live vicariously through his son and was like, you gotta play football because high school football were his glory days. and Yeah. You know, apparently, like, growing up and having a family wasn't fulfilling enough. Mm. No, apparently not. God, God that's hilarious. Have mercy. <laughs> that was just, that was just, wow. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be serious or not, because I know it was endorsed by the actual track author, but, man, that's hilarious. It's sad to me, though, that that's, like, one of the least worst films that I think we've watched. It honestly Tron looks review. fantastic. Like, I just, yeah. the thing that kills me, though, is, like, C.S. Lewis, so so in the Inklings group, like they got mad at Lewis because they were like, your metaphors aren't metaphory enough. Because like Aslan is literally like, you have to find me, but not in your world, and you'll know me by another name. So literally Aslan tells him like, I'm literally Jesus. Just in this world, I'm a lion. In your world, I'm gonna look like something else, and you have to find like know me by that name. And so they were like. You can't make him actually Jesus. That's not metaphor. <laughs> and the, they like got mad at C.S. Lewis over it. He's like, I do whatever I want. They're like, really? You put Santa Claus in? He's like, his name is Father Christmas. Whatever. Yeah. It cracks me up. They had fights over stuff like that. So Jack Chick actually passed away in 2016. A pre-millennial dispensationalist. That, that's a hell of a term. Man. That is a hell of a term. I love, I just, oh, theological arguments are so fun. He was a believer in the King James only oh, great. movement. Oh, great, yeah. Rick. He's one of those guys. Yep. I'm an NIV fan myself. NIV? Mm -hmm. New International Version. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, uh, why not? Like, you know. Just I'm a red letter, personally. Definitely, like, the version of the Bible written by a pedophile, like. Why, why not go for that one? You know, like that sounds like a, a legit translation to yeah, follow, like yeah. Because when when have people in this country ever been trusting of English monarchs? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I mean, it. I mean, this is the thing about the United States. The United States, at its core, uh, we actually had this happen. It, I, okay, in the video where Ben and I actually watched uh, the uh, so. Uh, the uh, America, you know, uh, you know, is America the greatest country in the world? America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Speech, 
And I and I said, you know, people believing in angels isn't a bad thing. It's just, you know, whether those people do terrible acts, that's what really would make it a bad thing. To which, you know, someone said, oh my, in the comment, actually it's one of the more recent comments, said, oh my gosh, I can't believe he actually said that. I was such a fan of this channel. Yes, believing in angels is wrong. What is wrong with you? And I'm like, my friend, it's called the freedom of religion. I don't care what someone... And actually, he made a comment. He said, "He said if I if I said I be still believed in Santa Claus, you'd call me out. And I'm like, no. No. I would respect your beliefs because you are a free-thinking individual and you are allowed to come to your own conclusions. That is what a logical individual does. I mean, I'd be like, I think that's a little silly, but, uh, you know, it doesn't make uh, yes. you a bad person well, or here's violent the thing. or anything. If you want to believe in God... If you want to believe in Allah, if you want to believe in Yahweh, if you want to believe in Krishna, if you want to believe in nothing, if you want to believe in what the hell ever, hell, even the flying friggin' spaghetti monster, I don't care. As long as you respect other people around you and you don't hurt people, I am completely fine with you believing in whatever the hell you want to believe in. How that dare you believe that there's something to this world after the fact of all the suffering and bullshit we go to. Yeah. You're a horrible person for believing such a thing. Yeah. That's what you sound like. Yeah, that's exactly right. This guy was 90 years old when they showed him this movie. God. It was made in 2014. He died in 2016. I wonder if he... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I wonder if... Let's see. Uh, Wait, this in. was made in 2014? The, the Dark Dungeon was made in 2014 the, is what the thing said when I looked it up. I thought it was it made was like It was that 90. recent? I thought it was made oh in the 90s. Oh, my God. There's people out there that still think this shit. Oh. No, I think they did it as, a, to like, Damn a spoof it. of his tr tract, but they tried to make it seem like they were serious to get his approval. Well, the thing I'm is... I'm really glad I've at least pointed out to my mom how stupid See, no, no, go back up. It had its world premiere at Gen Con. It. That's like a tabletop gaming convention. Yes, okay. So, okay, it is a parody. So, they, they made it exactly... Because it was written... Like, he... <laughs> His stuff probably came off as parody, <laughs> and so <laughs> so he thought. Okay. With, see, with most critics so most interpreting as satire, satire of source material. like wow. it's so bad, everyone assumes it's satire. Because <laughs> I, I, I guarantee you. Wait, wait, go back down. Really... Go back down. I was reading that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's not filmed as an outright parody, which they felt strengthened the movie as the source material was made by people who believe that Cthulhu is real and coming for your soul. That you can't satire as something so far out of touch amazing. with reality. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> there are people in this world that think Cthulhu is a real fucking thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Which include books by C.S. Lewis and J. I am legitimately saying this right now. Dear Lord, help these people. They need help. Yeah, yeah. They they do need help. Also, the Necronomicon. Ex mortis. There are a lot of Christians in this world that are real, real lost right now that have no idea. Yeah. Wouldn't know are. the difference between their butt and their eyeball. Like, well, oh man. I, look. I'm I see why gonna... people have such a negative opinion of Christianity, like, other than just, like, the you know, horrors that they've wrought upon people in the past. But oh, yes, absolutely. There's like there's, there's, stuff to there's literally some stupid people nowadays that, well, like, subscribe to the you, faith you, that don't you wanna, know what the hell they're talking about. You want a perfect example of, uh, of just how terrible, of how terrible some Christians can be, even in the modern era. Look uh, no further than the uh, Westboro Baptist, Baptist Church. Church. Yes, yeah. exactly. I don't... And, I don't Christians. No, can't. they're they're not really. They're Calvinists. They're they're pure Calvinists, which is a sect, which is considered a sect of Christianity, but it is not recognized. That's the thing that irks me is I've talked to some people before that assumed that most Christians were like that, and I'm like, why are you assuming most Christians are like this group of fucking insane people from like, but fuck nowhere out in the middle of Kansas? Yeah, they're literally out in Kansas. Yeah, and and here's the thing. Everyone assumes, uh, like, oh, they have all this money, they have all this power, their numbers are huge. Like, no. Their, their it's church membership right. is literally, like, 40 people. Believing that the Westboro Baptists represent all Christians is literally the same thing as believing that ISIS represents all Muslims. Exactly. So, like, if you're going to come out here and, like, defend Muslims, like, 
against like being called out by everyone for ISIS. Like you can't call out all Christians because of like West Wilbur Baptist. That's yeah, hundred percent. And, and, and plus another thing that's like comparing all atheists to Stalin or Mao. Like Stalin and Mao were hardcore hardline atheists, and if you didn't, it was well, I mean, yeah, like because if if you assume that all Muslims are like that, I mean, if they really were, nobody would stand a chance because there's like over a billion Muslims. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so exactly. They would have killed everybody they're all, else. They're all like that. We would have stayed a chance. So yeah, pretty much, clearly, it there it, would have been a massive modern day religious war over it, like, and we would have probably lost. Maybe, maybe. I mean. The thing is, more and more, the world's getting more and more secular, which, that's the thing that, that's the thing that gets me to some degree, is I, that... Well, I would disagree. Well, I'd, I'd say they're getting more, se- well, they're not prescribing to any religion, they're becoming more agnostic. Uh, well, I would disagree with that. I think they do have a religion, that religion is just the state. Ah. Uh, that's, that's my take on it. Okay, that's fair Yeah, I enough. do think a lot more people are subscribing to politics as a religion, I can agree with that. That's and that's a scary thing to me. That's yep. terrifying because when you look at everything down the political spectrum instead of looking at everyone on the individual basis, you wind up, you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face. Mm. I mean, there's so much wrong with people like for instance, I talked to someone earlier who is just outright a hundred percent on the side of like Minister Farrakhan. You know, hard. You know, just hardline anti-Semitism, hardline. You know, just like black superiority and all that. And I'm just like, so whenever Minister Farrakhan says that it's okay, but the very moment say someone like Adolf Hitler or Richard Spencer says it, then it's wrong. And he's just like, he's like, well, here's the thing: you don't understand. You don't understand what it's like for for black people. You know, they've never had a position of power. I'm like. Where's Minister Farrakhan at right now? At the head of his church? In front of millions and millions of, you know, black Muslims? Uh, that's a shit ton more power than I have, bud. I mean, you gotta stop judging everything on, like, the wide basis. Stop casting everything with a wide net. Instead, look at everything on the individual basis. And I know that's difficult. I know it's hard. I know it is very difficult to judge everything on an individual basis, but that's what you have to do if you don't want to blindly just kill people or, you know, cast people out simply because they don't prescribe to the exact same belief structure as you. I've ran into people who are both who are both subscribed to the Democrat and Republican side, and they're both fans of D&D. They're both fans of, like, certain kinds of movies. The only thing that they differ on is, oh... I like my guns. Oh, I don't like guns. That's that's really it. Like, small, minute differences and shit like that. And if you can just learn to cope with each other and learn to just understand that, you know, not everyone needs to believe the exact same thing that I do, then you'll come away with things a lot better. You'll come away with a much greater mindset than this, like, people have picked up ultra the, division uh, that we have nowadays. People have literally said the same thing that religious like um zealots forgot the word uh fuck brain it's an easy word you've heard it a thousand times before uh the crazy people from each religion oh yeah zealots and people not like zealots that. it's it's the word for radicals like fun yeah radicals like radical religious people like they're doing the same thing with politics and it's that these radicals do, which is if you don't believe the same thing I do, you're literally a horrible person and you deserve to die. Yeah. Like, I've heard people say that from all sides. Yes, I and have as well. it is fucked that you are taking politics to the same level that, like, religious radicals take religion. Like, yeah. You're making, like, more problems for the rest of the world, basically, by fucking believing shit like that. 100%. Oh, God. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was an experience, uh, one that I am definitely going to remember for quite some time. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and hopefully uh, we will see you all in the next If you've one. ever accidentally summoned Cthulhu or <laughs> other demons while playing a game of D&D, let us know about your story in the comments, because I would love to hear about I that. I want to hear about that, because <laughs> I, I want to hear that shit. That would be just amazing to hear. So, again, everybody, thank you all very much for tuning in, and I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Micah. I'm Nick. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace out. Thank you.